In this video, I want to take a quick look at how we can use our Z80 computer to develop some software. I've been going through the machine and testing all the various hardware functions to make sure that they're working the way that they should. Haven't encountered any problems so far, but I thought some of you might find it interesting to see uh, how I'm going about writing the software for the uh, test routines. And this is also the way I will go about developing the software when I get onto the operating system. As I've said in the previous videos in this series, um, this is really a project um, in which I'm writing a book. And the book will be available now in about four or five weeks. There will be a follow-up book after that that will detail um, how I'm going to be writing the operating system, um, boot ROM, monitor, that sort of thing. Um, the first book is really just about the hardware. Um, but this is now running. I've been going through testing the various features and functions. And once it gets to this stage, it becomes much easier for us to run tests. Now, this is a multi-bank machine. So, um, for example, when it uh, resets, following a reset, it switches to bank 1. And at the bottom of bank 1, which is where it starts executing code, we have our system ROM. That contains, in this case, that we're going to look at the monitor program. It will contain other things as well, but for now it's just got the monitor in there. A bit of housekeeping stuff. But the way in which the operating system will differ from the setup we have here is we need global access within the system to functions such as writing characters to the screen. and. Um, really all the system calls that deal directly with the hardware because at the moment if we switch to the zero bank the first bank which contains the bulk of the system ROM uh, the system RAM rather then um, we won't get access to the ROM because of course the ROM is in a different bank and there isn't any code at the moment in um, bank zero now there is some common RAM and the way systems like this normally work is during a boot up phase either from the ROM or from some mass storage media they will load some code into the shared area, the common RAM and then that code is available irrespective of which bank you switch to. So for example if all your video output routines are in common RAM you can access those irrespective of which bank you switch into. For anyone not familiar with programming on multi-bank systems, you might be wondering how you can make a call, for example, from bank 0 to an address in the ROM in bank 1. So if you wanted, for example, to run the monitor program from a program that's executing in bank 0, how would you go about doing that? Because, of course, if you just switch banks, you end up kind of in space as far as the uh, bank 1 address space is concerned. And you can't jump to a different address beforehand because, uh, of course, you'd then be running the wrong bit of code in bank zero. So it's very straightforward. All you do is you push the address you want to execute in the bank you're going to jump to onto the stack. So in this case, it would be address zero. That's where we would start executing the monitor from. Um, you would then switch banks using an out instruction. So you'd switch to bank one, and then you would issue a return instruction and the Z80 would then pull the address that you put onto the stack uh, off the stack and it would then jump to that address but now you're in uh, bank one of course and uh, you can of course do the reverse and jump between banks that way so it's quite a, um, a, a good way of switching between banks and it takes a couple of instructions and it allows you to seamlessly switch from bank to bank depending on what you want to do uh, but I will go into the, um, the, the system development uh, as it progresses. Probably do that in a separate series of videos but um, it is something that's uh, I think very interesting so I thought I'd give a basic taste of this in this video. So at the moment I'm testing the in-out ports and although we can use the monitor program so if we call up the monitor program and we look at the help file or the help screen then you can see we have a number of um, options on here. It's quite a powerful monitor and makes developing uh, software quite easy. On the right here you can see I have three LEDs and these are connected to the first three bits 
of uh, out port 1. So if we assume the ports are numbered 0, 1, etc. We have two 8-bit out ports and these three LEDs are on the first three bits of port 1. So we do, if you look at the monitor, have a port output command. So we can directly talk to these using the monitor. So if we call up this, it wants a port number, in this case 1, and then we'll give it some data. So I'll turn all these off. We'll set a value on the port of 0, 0. You can see they turn off. If we wanted to turn just the first one on, for example, then we can do the same thing. But in this case, we'll issue a value of 1 and just the first one turns on. If we want to turn the first and the third LED on then of course we can just issue a value of 05 and you can see so we have full control over it but it would be nice to be able to run some um, code to actually fully test these and we can do that quite easily now we have the tools within the monitor to do that we can write some code and um, we can then execute it and the way that we'll um, test the code you could of course blow a new ROM each time you do this but that's a bit of a time-consuming long-winded way of doing it and the method I'm going to show only takes a few seconds and um, makes life very easy so what we'll do is we'll dump the memory just by way of example at address 9100 and you can see it's just full of garbage that was there when um, the system was booted up. What we'll do now is go over to the PC and we'll look at how to write some simple code and turn it into a form that we can then send through to the computer. So over at the PC I have started up an assembler program, this is quite a nice one and uh, it makes writing code very easy but you can use whatever assembler you want. So in this particular case, I just want to write a simple program to test the code. Now, I will make this code relocatable, but you don't need to. You can um, define an origin and put the code wherever you want. In our case, we're going to be sending the code to an address of 9100. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter because this, as I say, is relocatable. But if you wanted uh, absolute code, then you can do that as well. You just need to know where it's going to reside on the target machine, but this can go anywhere. So all this code is going to do, it's going to um, load a value of zero into register A. It's going to output that value to port one. So that will be to the port that we've got the LEDs attached to. It's then got a delay loop. So it's about a um, hundred millisecond delay. It then outputs the a value of A again. It then has another delay and then it uh, adds a value of 1 to A, so it increments A and then if A hasn't reached 0, so though it's started at 0 because it increments it before it tests it, um, the first loop will result with a value of 1 in A. It will then jump round to the start of the loop and it will keep going round until the value in A has reached zero. So it will, in other words, it will loop 256 times. Once it's done that, it will return. And um, that's the end of the program. So all it's going to do is it's going to incrementally output all the possible values through port A. So all we do then is assemble. And once we've assembled, what we end up with is a series of files so in this case, we have the um, source code file, we have a binary output file, the hex output file, a list file, and the one we are interested in here is the object file. This is just uh, really a binary representation of the code, and that's the one that we can use to send through to the, um, the computer. So what we can do is open a terminal program. We can select the file. So in this case, as I say, it's the object file. Make sure we've got um, the binary option selected and we can now send this through to the computer. But first we need to uh, put the computer in a, in a state where it's going to accept the file. So we'll go back to the computer, get that um, prepared and then go from there. 
OK, so back at the computer, we'll pull the terminal up into the corner of the screen. And what we can now do is tell the computer we want to accept an incoming file. So all we need to do is, if we go back and look at the help screen, you can see we have a couple of options for loading a file. We've got L and Z. They're both the same. The only difference really is the L option displays data as it comes into the computer and Z does it transparently. It doesn't uh, show anything and is uh, much faster. Um, but we can use L so we can see the data coming in. And it's asking for a destination address. This is where it's going to save the incoming file to. And as I said, we are going to use address 9100. And it's now saying it's waiting for a file. So we'll send the file. So as you can see, it's very quick, very easy method of sending the data. We now have that program in memory. So if we dump the 9100 memory block, Remember this was full of garbage before, but it now contains our program and we can jump to that. We have two ways to jump to programs. One is to just go to the program and continue executing, um, but the problem there is uh, you can't return. You'd have to reset the machine unless there was specific code within your test program to return to the monitor, which you could do, of course. You could just have it jump to address zero. Or in the, our case, what we're going to do is use the second option, which is the call address. And the difference is that um, it will accept a return. And when it returns, before it uh, calls the instruction, it pushes the start address of the monitor loop onto the stack so that when our test program issues a return instruction, it jumps back to the start of the monitor. You will get the monitor header appearing on the screen. Now, all this uh, program does, if you recall, is increment the value, or should increment the value, on the output port 1. And we should see that uh, in the form of these LEDs counting up in binary. We could attach all eight um, uh, bits if we wanted to, but I thought just three would show us enough information. So what we'll do is we'll go to the program, so we enter K, give it the destination address, address which is 9100, and when I now press 0, we should start seeing the LEDs doing their thing. So as you can see, it's now counting up through the uh, possible permutations for port A. It will go through every single one. We can't see the top five bits, of course. But when it gets to the end, what should happen, it should return, and we should see the um, monitor header reappear on the screen. OK, so if we wanted to modify the code, all we'd have to do is edit it on the PC, recompile it, and then we could send it back up to the Z80 and uh, retest it. So you can see it's a very quick and easy way of uh, testing code, developing code. The other function we've got on here that makes life uh, easy for uh, test purposes is the S command, which allows us to send RAM back to the RS232 so we can send whatever we want. So in this case, let's say we want the contents of the uh, monitor ROM. Then what we can do is select the start address, in this case 0, the end address, which is 1000 hex, and we'll see that appear on the terminal. OK, so it's finished. Um, it's very quick as you can see. That was the purpose of making the RS-232 as efficient as possible. And what we can do is not only send the contents of the, um, the ROM, we can also send any other RAM area. So I'm just going to go and clear the terminal. OK, so the terminal's clear. What we can do, of course, is send the video RAM. Although it's a different uh, part of the memory system, the monitor can send the uh, memory address from anywhere. So if we want to send, all we need to know is the address of the video RAM, which we do of course know. And as you can see, all the uh, screen information has been sent through to the terminal. All in all, a very um, 
easy way to develop software so a lot of fun the once you get to this point the system becomes very uh, nice to work with and I think it's going to be a lot of fun developing the operating system.